Wednesday night. A few little snow flurries. But what's really sad, there's a lot that wouldn't want that at all. That's the saddest part. There are those that wouldn't want people just coming up the altar and praying, interrupting songs, <laughs> testifying and shaking hands. I'm about to preach that, and that's, that's sad that they wouldn't want that. Yeah. It's sad that you wouldn't want the most you can get of Jesus. Amen. Why would anybody want just a little bit of Jesus? Why would you want just a little bit of joy? Just a little bit of strength? Just a little bit of these things? Why would you want that? The only thing that would make sense why people would do that because they're afraid if they get more, then they'll have to do more. But why do we think that doing more for Jesus is a bad thing? He'll never require you to do more than you're able to do. He understands you work. He understands your age. He understands your physical ability. He understands your talents. He understands your family. He understands all of that. Some he calls to leave everything behind. Most he don't. So I want just as much as Jesus that I can get. I want to give him all of me that I can give. It's not going to be a punishment. <laughs> it's not going to be less of a life. It's going to be more of a life. I thought they were saying, you know, I thought... Of, Wonder how many thousands and thousands of songs they've sang. <laughs> and I appreciate it. God appreciates it. It looks good on your record. Yeah. Amen. Look at Acts in the fourth chapter. Very familiar scripture. Well, I felt the Lord led me to uh, today. Actually, I had my ribbon, my Bible, the little divider thing that comes with all Bibles. I had it in Acts 4. And I thought, is there something there I was going to look at? Because I jotted down a couple notes this week, and and they didn't seem to, so it was uh, actually notes from beyond, I guess, some other time. And like Daniel said, it didn't add up, didn't, didn't jive. And I, had, I turned to Act 4, I said, was that marked? And actually, it was for another message. I figured out later after God gave me the message. <laughs> it was for another part of another message a few weeks ago or something. I felt this is what he gave me for tonight. Look at Acts 4, beginning at verse 1. Reading about 22 verses, the Lord's will. Acts 4, beginning at verse 1. And as they spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of men was about five thousand. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas a high, Annas a high priest and Capius and John Alexander and many as were of kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set themselves in the midst, they asked, By what power, by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of the people. Now, first of all, we know Peter said it's going to be true anyway, if it's in the Word of God. But it said, Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost. So this kind of has caught my attention today. You can bank on this. <laughs> when he's filled with the Holy Ghost, you know what he's saying is 100%. We know the Bible is inspired, but this kind of is, brings it into where we live. He being filled with the Holy Ghost. So he's speaking what the Holy Ghost is saying. Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, 
If we this day be examining of the good deed done to the impotent man by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all that to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they looked at Paul and said, Paul, much learning has made you mad. You can't make, you can't make them happy. <laughs> They looked at Paul and said, much learning and made them mad. They looked at Peter and, and John said, they perceived they were ignorant and unlearned men. But I love this part. They took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Amen. I just read that different when I read it. They've been with Jesus. And behold, the man which was healed, standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, what shall we do to these men? For then indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem. We cannot deny it. Amen. But <laughs> there is spread no father among the people. Let us straightly there, therein uh, threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. And Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when their father threatened, further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorify God for that which was done. For the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was shewed. You may be seated. <coughs> Let us pray. Lord, we thank you and we love you. Thank you, Lord, again for a beautiful evening in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the day and protection you gave us today, God. We thank you. And God, we thank you for all the prayers, all the privilege of prayer, the handshakes and the hugs and the I love you's and the smiles. God, for those that has come to pray on the altar of God for a, a touch from your healing, God, or a touch from your hand. Lord, for the little church house with all the names in it, God, there's many names in there and some we know because we put them in. No one's ever looked at the names but you. And the ones that put them in. But God, we know there's some in there still need to be answered. Lord, still needs to be saved. Still needs to turn their heart to you. Turn from drugs and alcohol and all matter of sins, Lord. I, I, we pray for those. I, God, we pray now you may anoint physically that we may preach the word of God in the strength of the flesh. But above all, God, that you anoint spiritually may preach thy word in the power of the Spirit. Tying together the loose end, fill the voids we leave because our inability to let thy word go out freely. Let your name be lifted up. We praise you and we thank you. Give according to the needs, God. And we uh, like for everyone leave church feeling better than what they came. Either one, by a blessing, or Lord, two, by a help. Three, by a healing, or four, God, that they repented of their sins and got saved or got renewed and got blessed. We thank you. Anoint, we pray, dear Jesus. Amen. Amen. From this, our verse 7 and 12 and 17. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked them, By what power, by what name have you done this? Verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And verse 17, But there is spread no farther among the people. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. What we want to preach on, very common text, very common thought, why have so many stopped preaching Jesus? Why has so many stopped preaching Jesus? Now there's a statement that is said by many Christians and it goes like this or something like this. 
We preach our own funeral as we go through this life. You ever heard that said? We're preaching our own funeral as we go through this life. And I said that the other day, put it down to the clericism. I hope you're doing a real good job at it. <laughs> How good a job are you doing? You know, I preach a, a number of funerals, and sometimes people say things, sometimes they don't, but sometimes people are not associated with church whatsoever. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they say uh, uh, people that are the, uh, maybe not part of the family, but they're associated, and they say, Pastor, that was a real good service. Thank you. Sometimes nothing said, that's neither here nor there. But it's good when you say you did a good job, and sometimes somebody else preached, and they say, boy, they, somebody will tell me how somebody preached on funeral. I say, and they say, they did a real good job, and I appreciate that when others do a real good job when we talk about Jesus Christ. So I want you to ask your preacher in old funeral, how good a job you're doing? <laughs> how good a job you're doing? Amen. Obviously, if you live good, you're doing a real good job. If you're not living good, you're not doing a very good job. Uh, amen. Uh, so all the doctor that is preached uh, and all the songs that are sung uh, and all the acts done uh, in and out of church by God's people must point to Jesus. Everything we do must point to Jesus. Uh, amen. Uh, when you blow your horn at the stoplight because somebody hasn't hit the gas within three seconds from the time it turned gray, you're representing Jesus. Uh, you're pointing your life to Jesus. Uh, you're preaching your funeral. I, you're saying the things that you do. I, you probably wouldn't like it if we come up in a funeral and say, well, I know they was always blowing their horn to everybody on the road and they was always jumping on the people at McDonald's. They was always, it didn't sound like a very good message to me. <laughs> you need to have a good message. Amen. That wouldn't be well received at a funeral, you know. Amen. So we have to see that. Uh, by what power, by what means. Uh, he said, by what power, what means. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, by, by what name uh, have you done this? Uh, by what name are you doing this? Uh, amen. Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost uh, and said unto them, be anointed to all uh, and to all the people of Israel by the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Neither is there salvation in any other. Amen. It's only in his name. We get people nowadays that uh, says all kinds of ways uh, about Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. I'm going to take the Spirit. I'm going to take the Holy Ghost statements uh, about salvation uh, above any other TV star, uh, above any other uh, a man or woman upon the face of the earth. Uh, I'm going to take Peter uh, being filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, it very plainly says, we already know, as I said, all scripture is given by inspiration, amen, and proper for doctrine, so on and so forth. But this one very plainly said, and Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. Every once in the Bible, uh, they speak and they say, being filled uh, with the Holy Ghost, amen. Now, the Holy Ghost gave uh, them the things to write about. Uh, the Holy Ghost gave uh, uh, Samuel the right to write about David's sin. Uh, David was not filled with the Holy Ghost when he said, but Samuel was inspired by the Holy Ghost and he wrote about David's sin. Amen. And but we see but we see here Peter filled with the Holy Ghost and their salvation so we shouldn't question that at all. Now going back to chapter 3 a little bit when the healing of the lame man took place Peter fastened his eyes upon him which we're always taught not to do. We're always taught if there's somebody bumming don't look at them. Amen. Turn your head if you don't make eye contact with them. We're taught another thing too. And I've been taught this all my life. I've been guilty of it. I'm not going to give them money. They're going to go straight and buy alcohol or drugs. Let me give you another take on that. On Friday evening when a lot of people get paid, guess what they do? They go straight to the beer joint. They take their paycheck they worked a job, it might have been whatever job, they take that paycheck and they don't go home to give it to their wife, they don't go home and buy grocery for their children. Now, many times, amen, they go straight or the wife the other way around, they take that paycheck that you gave them and they go straight to the beer joint, amen. So the Lord said, Clarence, a lot of people takes a lot of money from what they learned, what they found, or what they done, what they earned, and they go straight to the beer join. So don't worry about it. Is there, don't worry about it. 
Don't worry about it. I've been taught that all my life. They was going to go buy drugs. So what? That's what they do on Friday evenings a lot of time on payday. Okay? That got real quiet, but you understand what I'm saying? Yep. You understand? Every paycheck, people go buy things they shouldn't do with. They take paychecks, they gamble, they take paycheck. Amen. They buy drugs, they buy alcohol, they do all kinds of wrong things with paycheck. On the argument, you say, well, they earned it. Hey, whatever the thing is, they do it. One does it, the other does it. Okay. So you have to come up with another reason not to give. I don't care where you're giving up, but you've got to come up with another reason. Because all kinds of people take their pay and do stuff with it. By today, prosperity, okay, I'll move on. They ain't flying all that well. Okay. Peter, I'm just telling you what my line of thinking, my line of thoughts on that, okay? And they ain't been, but about six months ago, the Lord told me that. Okay, okay, and Peter fastened his eyes upon him. We'll move on huh? with things that may be a little bit more enjoyable. Huh? Amen. With him, and John said, look on us. Amen. So we're taught not to look on them. We don't look at them. We may not want to give. I always think that every time I read this, he did exactly opposite from what we've been taught as a child. Amen. Peter said, said, look on us. Amen. And then he says something that's against all the doctrine of today preaching. He said, and Peter says, silver and gold have a number such as I have. I give them thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Peter didn't have any money to give him. It wasn't because he was afraid he was going to go buy drugs. It wasn't afraid because he thought he was going to waste it. He said, I simply don't have any money. Remember, he was a successful fisherman. Amen. And Jesus called him and said, Peter, you leave that and you come and follow me. Amen. He didn't have any money. He didn't have anything. Oh, but he had a message about Jesus Christ and him crucified. God didn't choose a high priest on the day of Pentecost to deliver the message. He didn't choose the rich to deliver a message. He chose Peter, who we keep thinking about failure. He chose David to be up on the throne of David, uh, who we think of failure. Uh, amen. Uh, we go back. Uh, but anyway, uh, silver and gold. Uh, and years ago, and I've told you this before, uh, I used to preach that silver and gold in today's messages. Uh, and that's been 20 or 30 years ago. Today's preach that silver and gold have I some, uh, and such ye have give unto me. In my name I'll heal you. That's today's message. Today's message. So, going on that theory, I, hey man, I like to do theories. Somebody told me the other day about how a, 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 a Coke, I told you, well, by, you put a nail in a Coke and it'll rust it. I said, you realize it'll rust if you put it in water too. Yeah. You realize it'll rust if you hold it in air. In fact, the only way it won't rust is put it in oil. So, going by your theory, I should drink oil. Yeah. I just like to reason things. Makes sense, doesn't it? Don't drink this, it'll rust the nail. Here, it won't rust the oil, so don't do that. Don't try that at home. I'm a professional. By today's prosperity preacher, uh, Peter and John, uh, amen, uh, not, must not be living in faith and living in trust. Uh, by the prosperity doctrine itself, by the definition of prosperity doctrine, uh, they was not living in faith. Uh, they was not living in trust. Uh, they was not living under the blessings uh, of God. Uh, let me assure you, uh, uh, Peter was under the blessings of God, uh, under the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. Uh, they preached, uh, amen. And that first day, uh, uh, 3,000 people. Uh, can you imagine what crowd? Uh, yeah. Amen. They didn't have any kind of mic uh, microphones, anything else. They preached and 3,000 people uh, were saved. Uh, amen. Uh, they go in the hill uh, uh, through the name of Jesus. Uh, they immediately came to him. Uh, they said, look and marvel. Uh, and Peter said, don't you marvel. Uh, don't you wonder about us. Uh, it's not me. Uh, it's Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, Nazareth. Peter was preaching about Jesus Christ. Hey, if anybody had a right to say, well, well, now, you know, yeah, it was me that he said about, it's not our own, it's not our own uh, power. 
that made this man walk. And he said, now the God of Abraham, you ever catch this? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our Father has glorified his son Jesus. And then he goes right in. Amen. He didn't bite down one bit. Whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate. Amen. We were determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. In verse 16, and his name through faith in his name have made this man strong. Hey, uh, the man went walking and leaping uh, and praising God. Uh, he said he knew uh, they loved Abraham. Uh, they loved Isaac. Uh, they loved Jacob. Uh, they loved Moses. They loved all of these. Uh, hey, uh, uh, Peter here is putting Jesus Christ uh, uh, through all of those. Uh, amen. Uh, he said God have glorified. Uh, amen. Not Abraham. Uh, not Isaac. Not Jacob. Uh, and not Moses. All the others you want to name. He said, God has glorified his son, Jesus Christ. What he's saying is Jesus is above Abraham. Jesus is above Isaac. Jesus. And Jesus told him the other way. He said, Moses gave you not that bread, but my father was in heaven. Jesus is above all. Amen. So his name and faith in his name. So it all started with healing, but then it went to repentance. <laughs> Amen. Then I went to repentance. Uh, and in 3 and 19, repent thee therefore and be converted. Uh, uh, Peter message, uh, it was about healing. Uh, he had a healing. Uh, and then uh, they came to him uh, and he said, it's Jesus. Uh, then they go to repentance. Uh, uh, Peter brought in repentance uh, and forgiveness of sin. Uh, in verse 26, uh, and this is this is how, if you want to know what the blessing of God, get your Bible, mark it on 3 and 26, uh, put a big star beside of it. This is how God blesses. It's a big debate how God blesses today. Is it with a Cadillac or a Geo? It's a big debate. Is it a Cadillac or F-350? Ah, diesel. Now you're getting... How does God bless? Unto you first God, the Bible tells you how God blesses. Verse 26. Underline it, put a star beside it if you're marking your Bible. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you. Wow. Here's a straight statement. Sent him to bless you in giving you a new home. I missed that, didn't I? My eyes have been blurry tonight. Send him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquity. Oh my goodness. What kind of doctrine is that? <laughs> What kind of doctrine is that? Uh, amen. That won't preach nowadays. Uh, that's not going to build the church nowadays. Uh, you're not going to get a mega church so you can have big numbers. Uh, that's not going to do it. Uh, he sent him to bless you. Uh, amen. Uh, he didn't say anything about a material thing. Uh, he didn't say how he blessed me is turning away from my iniquity. Uh, hey, uh, that gives me eternal life. Uh, it gives me a prayer line. Uh, it gives me joy. Uh, it gives me hope. Uh, it gives me salvation. It gives me reassurance. Oh my, he had blessed me. He had blessed me abundantly. And I'm not thinking about anything I can name. He's blessed me and turning me away from my iniquity. He's blessed me by giving me blessings in his word. That's what the Bible says, how God blesses. That's what the Bible says. So mark down 3 and 26 of Acts. How God blesses. Okay, we go on chapter 4. And the Sadducees didn't want to hear about the resurrection. They didn't believe in a resurrection. They sure didn't want to hear about it. Uh, in verse 2, it said, Being grieved that they were atop uh, the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection of the dead. Uh, that's the last thing they want to hear about the resurrection. Uh, amen. Uh, so, uh, uh, and others didn't want to hear uh, about Jesus. Uh, so they had a very bad audience here. But some of them wanted to hear. Uh, in fact, in verse 4, uh, uh, 5,000 uh, believed. Uh, now you're talking about in the temple area. You're talking about one day. 
3,000 people get saved. That's how many got saved. So we're talking about the amount of people there is unbelievable. If 3,000 got saved, there had to be a lot more than that there. Then 5,000 get saved. Can you imagine the multitude? And boy, did the Pharisee have a problem. They bad. They want to stop this. Oh, it's like the little boy about I read about putting you uh, trying to stop up the uh, the dike uh, and holes are spraying everywhere. Uh, hey, it's hard to stop it when three thousand get saved, then five thousand get saved. People are getting healed. It's hard to stop it. Yeah. You know how to stop revival in your church? Is make everything about Jesus. It's not a secret. We think it's about all kinds of things. It's about everybody loving one another and making it about Jesus. Amen. That's it. You see, all Clarence, surely there's more formulas to that. I mean, I've studied a lot of years, taught for a lot of years. What's this all about? Everybody loving one another? Everybody making it about Jesus? Everything works. Yeah. We see people get saved. People want something there. They want it when they see it's about Jesus. Amen. They want it. I told you a few years ago, one of the things we're making a mistake in a modern church is making a mistake in. They're trying to make church interested for those that's not interested in church. Now, don't take that wrong. Think about how I'm saying it. We promise all kinds of things. These people don't want worship. They want a social gathering. They don't want to really make it about Jesus. They don't want to hear about repentance. They don't want to hear about godly living. Uh, amen. Uh, they just want to uh, uh, be named by name only. Uh, amen. Uh, we'll wear our own prayer. Uh, we'll eat our own bread. Uh, we just want to be associated with the church uh, uh, to take away our reproach from among men. Uh, our Isaiah scripture. Uh, amen. They don't want anything. So we try to make it interesting. Uh, okay, we'll change it. Uh, you go ahead and bring coffee and donuts in. Uh, they'll get a few in that wasn't in. Uh, amen. Uh, you come as dressed to yard. They'll get some in that wouldn't come. Amen. We'll have all these social events. They'll get some in that we didn't have. Amen. And you and we got all these programs for you. We'll give you this and that. They'll get some in that wouldn't have. And you end up with a loud deceit in church. Why would anybody want to try to make one? <laughs> Why did anybody, they'll kind of come about natural. <laughs> Amen. If you want to, why did they try to make one? Huh? But who is threatening the ministers uh, and churches today? They have to stop preaching and teaching Jesus. Who has threatened these uh, that they stop preaching about Jesus? What's the big threat? Mm -hmm. I said this many years ago, and it's come to be true. I said full time ministry can be a wonderful thing, obviously. It can be a wonderful thing. It gives time to visit and all kinds of things. It can be a wonderful thing. TV can be a wonderful tool to put the message out. But I say it's very dangerous because I can get used for the wrong reason. Once my livelihood, my retirement, my livelihood, everything I do depend on your paycheck, there's not one in a thousand that's going to just preach what they want to preach knowing they're going to be put out. If the church doesn't want it. Very few can do that. Very few. Peter and them was wanting to do that. Threaten if you want to. You tell me, should we listen to you or listen to God? <laughs> but very few. But see, his livelihood wasn't based on that. So we turned something that could be very good into the way that we've got a hold on it now. People got to provide for the family. And it can be, be great. It can still be great. But also... Some can control you. That's the bad thing about it. That's the bad thing. And across the pulpits in the Sunday morning, there are going to be thousands of preachers know what should be preached and won't do it because they've been threatened. It's a real issue, people. It's a real issue. You're threatened by all kinds of ways. You're threatened by all kinds of things. You're threatening small churches or big churches. You're threatening all kinds of things. Amen. Just preach Jesus. I refuse to let the world threaten me. I refuse to let the world or anybody threaten me. I'm going to preach about Jesus. Okay, I'm not saying that harshly at all. But we got so many people that are so running scared that they won't be loved. They won't be liked. They won't be accepted. They won't grow. The church won't grow. They won't do... 
Amen. So, how come so many have stopped preaching Jesus? How could anyone, we're going to close in about two more statements. How could anyone use God as love for condoning all types of sin? And it goes direct against the words of God himself. God is not going to go against his own word. Brother Abby Ashley said it this way. You don't draw a line in the sand and tell God to work to your line. God draws a line, you work to his line. Amen. God draws a line, you work to his line. Here's something I looked up. I was looking up today about mega churches and what they actually preach. I was going to study and how many times they preach against sin. I figured I could find and I found a, a real interesting two sentence thing, two or three sentence. It's really interesting. And some of those you can look and go back to your message. You never hear a message about sin. It's always a feel good message. Now I want you to feel good when you leave. Either feel good because you repented or feel good because you was blessed. In today's church, I'm going to read it straight from this, see if you accept this. In today's church, often they don't preach the, the greater points of God's word. And this is what I read. Judgment is never mentioned in a lot of pulpit. Judgment is never mentioned. Repentance is rarely sought. We want to build a church rather than break a heart. A God of a broken heart. Yeah. We want to build a church instead of breaking a heart. We want to be political correct rather than biblical correct. We want to call on com comfort rather than stir and convict. You think that fits? A lot of messages? Yeah. We want to build a church, not break a heart. Everything is focused on building a church. Not one thing in the Bible, God said, Clarence, your reward is going to be great because you had this many. Not one thing in the Bible. We want to build Christians. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your love and your mercy. We thank the Lord for your great grace. And we pray, God, you may take the message and apply it to our hearts. Lord God, that we may glorify your precious holy name. Why has people quit preaching about Jesus? About Jesus means that we need to be convicted of our sins. About Jesus means that we need to seek you for help, for comfort, for everything we do. About Jesus is mean we're supposed to live a godly life separate uh, from the world. About Jesus means that we love one another. About Jesus means we're concerned about our lost brothers and sisters. About Jesus means we're concerned about those that have failed, uh, those that have sinned. Uh, about Jesus means, uh, God, we want to build a church, uh, not in numbers, but in worship of you. If we just keep it about Jesus, uh, good things happen. Uh, and I challenge the church, uh, and I challenge everybody here to keep it about Jesus, uh, and you'll see amazing growth. Uh, amen. I believe that uh, in people. Uh, again, I'm not talking about busting out the walls. I'm talking about seeing people grow. Uh, I'm talking about seeing people saved. Uh, I'm talking about seeing our family saved if we keep it about Jesus. No other name given whereby we must be saved. Through his name was this man made whole. Lord, it's through your name. If anything good comes, it's always through your name. In thy name we pray. Amen.